Now, I started the series last, last week, and I'm just going to try and wrap it up today. And I titled it, um, Creating an Atmosphere of His Praise. And I subtitled it, The Spirit of Honor and Order. The Spirit of Honor and Order. The Spirit of Honor and Order. Still, in that general topic that we have, creating an atmosphere of His praise. Because we are created to become the praise. We are we are made for his praise. Our life is to dis display his glory. Amen. We are the billboard of God's glory. If anyone wants to see God, they just look at our lives. And we talked about worship, that worship is not the song we sing. Worship is the life we live. That's true worship. And that's why Jesus says in, in John chapter 4, verse number 24, he says, Now the true worshiper will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Because worship is not in only songs, it's the life we live. Our lifestyle, we worship the Lord. We worship the Lord with our lifestyle. Amen. Amen. But today we're looking at honor and order. The first act of worship is order. One of the things I shared with us last week is that the greatest and only sin is disorderliness. Every sin is an act of disorderliness. When a man is out of order, it's sin. It's, it's sinful. So sin is not, everything you can talk about sin, it's just an act of disorderliness. When a man is outside the range of God's order or God's purpose, it becomes sin. And that's why the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They've come short of God's standard. And why, why did they come short of God's standard? They are out, out they are unaligned. They are not aligned with God's purpose. So the first act of worship is order. When a life is not in order, that life cannot truly worship God. In fact, our prayer outside of order brings frustration. It doesn't matter whether the person is a Christian or it doesn't matter whether they are not a Christian. The order, the, the order of God is order. Say it that way. The order of God is order. When a life is in order, that life is bound to succeed. Amen? You know, sometimes we spiritualize a lot of things. And we end up finding out that all those things we spiritualize are not really spiritual. If, your life, if you are going to be successful in life, you must live orderly. You can't live disorderly and want to reverse it with prayer. Order is not a, prayer is not a substitute for order. Prayer or singing of praise is not a substitute for order. Any life that is outside of order, that life is bound to fail. Check that life out. In fact... Our problem is not the devil. Our problem is we outside of order. So it's key. If I'm to teach Christians, if I'm to teach you one thing, is this teach, which what I'm teaching right now. Because if you align yourself properly, if you do the right thing at the right time, in the right place, there's no way you will fail in life. There's no way you will fail in life. So order is key and it's the first order of worship. We can't become an object of his praise in 2019 if our life would not be in alignment with the word of God. There's no way. God is not a magician. God is not Father Christmas. God wants order. He wants us to be orderly in everything we do. So we talked about this last week. We said order is the true show of honor. You cannot honor your destiny except first you align your destiny in order. A lot of us abuse our destiny by being disorderly. Every time you are disorderly, you are abusing your destiny. You are neglecting, you are, you are, you are, you are, be, you are, you are, you are abusing your destiny. Let me put that word. Every time we behave disorderly, every time we don't, Walk in order. Every time we do 
things contrary to our destiny. We are abusing our destiny. So order is the true show of honor. You don't honor a thing if you are disorderly. The true show of honor is order. The true show that you honor your destiny, the true show that you honor your parents is to live orderly. So order is important and is the first act of our worship. The true show that you honor your assignment is order. Amen. And we talked when we, we, I went and told us about the definitions of order is the ability to organize, ability to set in in a perfect condition, ability to properly organize. And I have my own definition that I actually crafted from the word of God. Order is wisdom in operation. Order is what? Wisdom in operation. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. You know what is wrong, you don't do it. And order is that wisdom in operation. So you align yourself properly to the very will of God and the very purpose of God for your life. Scripture will record that, have you seen a man that is diligent in his business, he shall sit before kings and not mean men. What that scripture simply is saying, that have you seen a man that is orderly? Have you seen a man that lives intentionally? He lives deliberately. He does not allow things to happen to him. He happens to things. He does not allow life to do him. He, do, he, do, he does life. That's a man that is orderly. Does not allow life to do him. Like most of us Christians, we just well, um, well, you know, the will of God, anything what God wants, anything God wants is okay with me. No, 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 no. It just shows that you don't have full control of your destiny. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You do life. Say to your neighbor, do life. Yeah. Life will never give to you what you desire, but life will only give to you what you demand. That's right. That's right. And every time you place a demand, you are applying force. You are trying to go against the norm. The norm is failure. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But because you are living orderly, you begin to have your hand on the grip, on your steering, and say, no, I'm not going to allow the wind to blow me out of my course. It's living intentionally. You're living against the noise from the, our world. That tells you you cannot. That tells you you can only settle for this. You say, no, I know who I am. I know my assignment. I'm honoring my life. I'm not just here by an accident. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of destiny. I've come to live and to live in fullness. Because Jesus says, I've come to give you life and to give you life in abundance, in fullness. So I accept the gift of Christ. To live my life in fullness, that takes order to get there. Can I hear loud amen? amen. So, order is what? It's wisdom in oppression. Why wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. First, Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fool despises wisdom and instruction. The fool despises wisdom and instruction. The fool despises wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You want to get knowledge? Don't forget, we say wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. And the, the wisest king that ever lived, Solomon, is the wisest king, great man that ever lived. He says, if you're going to really, really fear God, the proof that you have the fear of God is knowledge of God. And the proof that you are operating in wisdom is your, the proper application of the things you have come to know. So you are no longer hearer, you, are be, you become doer. You operate in wisdom when you become the doer of the word of God. It's proper application of knowledge. It's wisdom. It says last week that if you don't organize your life, you will agonize your life. If your life is not orderly, you will agonize. That's not the plan of God for us. God has given us free will agents. We are free moral agents. That is to say that we have the right to choose. Choose what you want to do. For some of us, we've chosen to be disorganized. We've chosen not to respect time in our lives. We've chosen not to honor our destiny. 
Um, someone is saying, Pastor, no, 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 no one can do that. Every time you walk disorderly, you have just chosen to dishonor your destiny. Can I hear loud amen? Yeah. So last week we talked about the fruit of, of order. One of the indicators that your life is orderly is joy. The second is peace. Sorry, the first is peace. The second is joy. And the third is increase. Everywhere there is order, you see increase. Every life that is orderly, you see increase. The life increase is automatic. When you are orderly, you increase. I gave an illustration. Praise God, tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'll be traveling to Florida for a conference. So for some of us, we're going to be going. Now, think about it. If I just want to pack my luggage because I'm going to do that tonight. It, it looks as if I'm not even really organized. Because I, I, I should have done that by now. Now, if I just get into the room and just grab all the clothes and just dump them in my luggage, guess what? I'm going to abuse that luggage because it's not going to take enough. But because I'm disorganized, I did not properly fold. So what order simply means to organize. You properly, every time you fold your clothing properly, you create what? Space. Every time a life is lived orderly, create space for more. For growth, increase, and multiplication. Every time we are disorganized, there is, we, just, we just block every space where there's no more room. There's no more room to fill in more luggages. God is going to bless you with more things, but guess what? You don't have room to put them in because your life is in disarray. Your life is not organized. So there's nowhere to put the, the blessings. And you are saying, God bless me, God bless me. God said, there's no room. There's junk all over the place. You got to clean this up. You got to clean this up so that I can fill it up more. When you make more space, you can put in more things in your room. Can I hear us hard? I'm preaching, it looks as if I'm in a different world and you guys are in a different world. Let me drive it home. How organized is your home? I see, I see your bedroom now. Don't, don't tell anybody. No, 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 no. It's the beginning. It's the beginning. If you cannot dress up your bed when you wake up in the morning, if your clothes are all over the place, that just tells me exactly who, who you are. It's not about speaking in tongues. It's about how organized is your home. Ladies, how organized is your kitchen? Everything is all over the place. You can't even find where you kept the last, the spoon or the plates. It shows that you are disorganized. No, can, can I be honest with us? Don't look very far. Check your house. Don't look very far. Don't, don't, let's, let's not go too far. I'm telling you the truth. Can, can I say this of us? It's not a loving mother. No, it's not. You know, your, your daily routine is an indicator of who you truly are. It's honestly, your daily routine points to who you truly are. Not when Pastor George is coming to your own, you clean up everywhere. That's not who you are. You may deceive me to think that's who you are. But the real you is the way you live your life on a daily basis. And I say this to you, to prove that you are not living orderly. The little thing is your home. Go home, check how you left the home today. It's just the proof. I don't want to go too far. I'm be super spiritual teaching you guys what I want to teach you guys. I just want to give you a simple thing. You just left the home. How did you leave your home? It tells me if you are orderly. You don't fake order. It's who you are. Your respect is what you honor. It's the way you've decided to live your life. But some of us, we don't care. We drop things anywhere. It's just a sign that something is wrong fundamentally that we have to intentionally change by the way we do things, by the way we live life. If you cannot organize the little thing, you will not organize the big thing. 
Amen. Amen. Okay, let me leave it. So when we organize our life, it brings increase. It, it allows for increase. Well, look, let me give you the benefit of order. That's where I stopped last week. The benefits of order. When a life is order, the life increase. There's increase when a life is order. Order produces increase. It produces productivity. You want to be productive with your life? You want to be productive in the things you do? You must set your house in order. You must set your life in order. First thing first. Second thing second. Cut out the unessential. Stick to the essential. And unify under your vision. First thing first. I told you guys last week that if you really want to put your life in order, this world will never elude your thinking. And that's what we're doing today in our Connect Group. What next? An orderly person does not think about the finished product. He talks about the next thing. You want to be orderly in life? Focus on the next thing. Forget about what will the final result be. The reason why most people are not organized is because they are looking at the finished product, not knowing that there are steps to be taken to get to that power point. Am I communicating? So if you're going to organize what will be your motto or what will be the, your prevailing word that comes out of you all the time is, what next? Now I'm here, what next? What next? What next? What next? What next? That should be what we ask ourselves on a daily basis. What next? So order, one of the benefits is increased productivity and creativity. If you're not orderly, you cannot create. It takes an orderly mind to think. A disorganized mind cannot think. How long, how many minutes can you stay on a thing? Tells me how organized you are. Can I repeat that again? This is just talking to each other. We're just talking to ourselves. How much time can you stay on a thought to process that thought without being derailed by other thoughts? Tells me how orderly you are in your life. Hear me out. I'm not teaching you guys this just to bring you guys. It's just to, for us to realign our life. I'm not perfect. I struggle too with some of these things I'm teaching you guys. I told you how I told you my, one of my flaws last week, but a snowblower did not read the manual. <laughs> so what would take me, what would take me five minutes takes me about 30 minutes and I'm, my wife was asking me, can't you control it? I said, I don't know. <laughs> because I did not read it. So I'm disorderly. I, 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 I'm saying that to make you feel okay. You know? I, I'm not perfect yet. I, I'm still walking my way. But the truth of the matter is that if we can't organize our life, we cannot be successful in life. Amen? So how long can you stay on a torch without wondering about so many things? What is your focus life? How much can you stay on a thought? Because definitely you know in life, those that are very successful, they stay on it. Stay on a thought, meditate on it. Because the more you look at the thing, the more... You discover that that thing is possible. Am I communicating? Yeah. Am I communicating? There's nothing on, in life that is not possible. The only problem is that sometimes we don't stay too long to get the solution. Amen. And it's just Mark chapter 6 verse 39 and 40. If you are not orderly, nothing can increase. Look at what happened there. This, Jesus had a crusade and had about 5,000 men or so, and they ran out of food. It's been three days now, and Jesus had to send them away. And so Jesus was telling the disciples, what are we going to do with these guys? And he said, we don't have food. We don't have food, and we can't even, we don't have enough money to, to buy food and give to all these 20, about 20,000 people in this crusade ground that Jesus held. And Jesus, in trying to multiply, or in trying to multiply the bread, he told the disciples, I cannot multiply this bread except men are orderly. So he says, let them sit in fifties 
Organize them. Nothing increased except there is organization. Jesus would have just said, well, Father, thank you. No. For any increase, there must be what? Order. Increase answer to order. You can pray as much as you want to pray, sing as much as you want to sing, fast as long as you want to fast. If you are not orderly, they can, you can never experience increase. So Jesus told them, let them sit in 50s, in 20s, in 30s. After that was done, he now blessed the little fish and God multiplied it. It was important for them to be orderly. And the same for your life. If there's nothing you will do this month, is try to organize your life. Set your priorities straight. Amen? Amen. Set your priorities, what? Straight. Verse 39, and he commanded them to make them sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundred and by fifty. Order. Before now, they were disorganized. Everybody was all over the place. He said, no, 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 no. If we're going to multiply, if we're going to be creati creative this time around, there must be order. So you cannot increase your finance. I talked about finance, guys. Those of you that missed it, and a lot of you missed it last night. I talked about finance. Thank you for John, John Yakubu and Wesley. Wisely, right? Thank you guys very much for what you did yesterday. If you can't organize your finance, you cannot increase it. You cannot. If you constantly swipe, like I've always told you guys, you constantly swipe because you have some money in the bank, you are not going to be wealthy. There must be proper organization. You must live intentional. Nothing just happens. People make things happen. Nothing just happened. The only thing that just happened is failure. Do nothing, you will fail. You don't have to do anything to fail. Just don't do anything, you fail. That's the only thing, and none of us want failure here. But if you want something to, if you want to be really successful, you must do something. Can I hear loud, amen? Order helps to direct our focus. And I was able to spell focus by saying, first thing first, other things second, cut out the non-essential, unite on the mission and stick to it. Do we have that? It's order, focus. First thing first, what is first? Don't tell me five years down, what do I need to do today? You guys will understand one thing for a fact. And sometimes we don't think if you guys can change your thinking, if we can change our thinking and begins to understand the process that it takes to do anything and begins to apply our heart to it, you're going to be successful. Trust me, you're going to be successful. Because for us human beings, we just think, well, say for instance, I want to get to my car. An ordinary mind, a mind that is not transformed, does not see the process that it takes for me to get to my car. They just think, well, yeah, I'm just going to get my car. There are more than 20 or 10 decisions that I have to make to get to my car. 10 decisions that I have to make to get to that car. At least 10. First, I must make up my mind. That's a decision. It's a decision. But some, the ordinary mind don't think it is. Don't process this. First, I must make up my mind. Second, I must make up my mind to walk away from this sanctuary now. These are decisions. So if you don't know what comes first, you will not be able to organize your life. And that is where people give up. Because they don't know how to arrange him. Everything is coming on. That's what the world gives to you. It bombards you with a lot of things. Mother's Bachelor, our mothers here, 
the, 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 the husband is there becoming, um, um, leave him alone. The children are there and everything all over the place. There's so many phone calls. You don't know what to do. You're just saying, well, well. no, 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 no. What focus is saying is not first and foremost. I don't have to do everything. What is that one thing that I must do? One thing I must do if I'm going to go to my car, I must make up my mind. I'm going to my car. The next thing is, I must make up my mind that I'm going to walk out of this place even though you guys are staring at me. <laughs> make up my mind. Number three, I must make up my mind, should I go through this door? Would the usher allow me to go through this door? Or can I? Am I, am I communicating? Yeah. I must also make up my mind that I must look for my keys. Because I can't get into that car. I, we can list. For the ordinary mind, they don't see these things. And that's why it becomes confusing. That's why it becomes overwhelming. That's why life becomes confusing and overwhelming. Because first thing is not first thing. They're looking at the whole picture. If you're going to eat an elephant, you start with a bite. First and first. I want to be this. What's the first thing first? I want to get out of debt. What is the first thing first? Stop spending. Mm. There's a lot of things that goes. First, stop, make up your mind to stop spending. That's what you have to do. Organize your expenses. Sit down and calculate what you make. I'm still in the spirit of what you taught us last week, yesterday. What's other? First and first. Give it to me again, please. First thing first, other thing second. There will always be second in your life. Because when you get the first, there's a second. When you get to the second, you, there's what? Another second. You begin to make, take your step before you know it. Wow, I've gone this far. Without being overwhelmed. Without getting confusing. Why? One step at a time. That's focus. First thing first, other things second, cut out the non-essential. There are things that are not relevant. Don't discuss what is not relevant to me. I don't want to hear that. It's not, it has no impact to my destiny. It has no impact to where I'm going to. Don't become busybody in another man's middle. It clouds the whole thing. What does not belong to you, don't go for it. Don't go for it. Just focus on what you are doing. One step at a time. The, what, let me tell you the truth. I, I do this a lot. I don't want to, anything that doesn't concern me, I don't want it. You know how broke Tim Branch? They've been wanting me to come and say, no, you guys focus on your broke thing. I focus here. Why will I be in broke thing? Why will I be here? I'll be all over the place. I'm going to be confused. It's just one little brain here. What is important to me? This. Am I communicating? So figure out what is important to your life. Not everything is necessary. Sometimes we think they are necessary. They are not. Focus on the essential. And how do you know the essential? This decision or this thing will aid where I'm going to. It will enhance my destiny. If it will not, you don't need it. Amen. Amen. Sources of order. Number three. Get wrong with this. How, where do we get our orders from? Order comes from obedience to the rules, to law, and to authority. Order comes from obedience to what? To rules, to laws, and to authority. You cannot be orderly when you despise or have disregard for rule and instruction. Order comes from rules, laws, and what? And authority. Uh, 
Let me say something here. It can be controversial, that's fine. Scripture is controversial too. What is scripture? You know, people say, well, we're not under the law. We're just in grace. And I say to them, okay. Go and kill people. Because the law is thou shalt not kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I complicated? Yeah. So when they tell you that no, 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 the law, obey the law. We're not under the law. We're not under Old Testament. It's a lie. They, are just, they just want to be free for all. All that come from obedience to the rules, to law, and to authority. And I tell my friends that say it's grace, don't talk about the law. I say, okay, go and kill somebody. You know, under, no, you're not under law anymore. Go kill somebody and see if you, you will sleep home today. <laughs> Am I communicating here? If you are going to be orderly, I'm not saying we're not under grace, but grace does not negate the place of authority and of rules. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, Paul says. If you are going to really make your life orderly, there is the place of rules, of laws, and of regular of, um, authority. You can't negate that and live an orderly life. Freedom is not free. It will cost you your freedom. If you think you are free to do anything, then it's going to cost you your destiny. If you think you are free to do anything, it's going to cost you eternity. If you think you are free to do anything, it's going to cost you your whole life. So the source of order is obedience to the rules, to laws, and to authority. Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of instruction. It's the beginning of knowledge. But the fool despise. The, the fool despise what? Wisdom and instruction. The fool despise says, ah, I don't care. That's what the fool says. I don't, I don't care. No, you have to care. Because your destiny is at stake. You have to care. Oh, I'm just myself. I can do what I want to do. You are going, you are heading, you are heading close to your grave. Trust me, if you, can, if you think, if you have these thoughts in you saying, well, I'm just an adult that can do whatsoever I want to do, you're getting close to your grave. Something bad will happen. But if you come under authority, first the authority of God. It's the first authority you must come under. The authority of God. What does the Bible say? What does God want for my life? It's key if we're going to be very, very successful. So all that, the source of all that is, our, is obedience to the rules, laws, and authority. The authority of God, number one. You'll find out that the first problem that God, the first problem God solved was this problem of disorderliness. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Let's go. Let's read that. Let me try to wrap this thing up. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God calls the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were in the first day. The first problem God solved was disorderliness. The earth was there, but it was formless. The earth was void. Does not mean that things were not already on the earth. It was just that they were in their wrong places. This orderliness simply means it's not that you don't have things in your life, but they are in the wrong places. You are not having the first thing first, second thing second. 
cut out the non-essential, you are just grabbing everything into your life. That was the position of the earth. You will, you will find out that God did not import anything to make the earth workable. It, what God did was put the things in their right place. He says, let the water be separated from the land. And guess what? We now discover that there are things on the earth. That's when the grass can now grow. That's now where the, the sea can now bring out creatures after its kind. Why? God solved that disorderliness. Let me tell you the truth. Everything to make it in life is already in you. But they are in the wrong, they are, for some of them, they are in the wrong places. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. You have everything. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Everything to make you successful on planet Earth, you already have it. In some cases, it's just that they are not in the right places. My brother there can talk. I remember his face. You know why people are looking for him all over the place? It's because he can talk and he properly positioned himself in the talking industry. <laughs> We're in the same industry. Am I communicating? Everything, the first thing you must do is to organize your life. What is your strength? The thing that drives you right now does they match with your strength. The things that you pursue right now, and you're almost hitting your head on the wall, does that align with what strength you carry? The problem God solved for us was all disorderliness. Everything was on planet Earth, but they were just in the wrong places. Darkness was over the place. If I ask them to switch off all this light, if you walk in, if you look, if you peeped from the door, you will see nothing. Am I right? It's a state of disorderliness. Darkness is a state of disorderliness. Every time purpose is not clear, abuse is inevitable. What clarifies a man's purpose is his ability to first of all know the source, know his creator, and find out what the creator actually has in him or her. Because when you don't have understanding of your purpose, your life will be abused. Either by you, most abuse is by herself, it's self inflicted. Before people abuse you, you must have abused yourself. Pastor told you, you're just being hard. It's just the truth. Because I want us to get somewhere. That's why I'm coming up the way I'm sounding now. If you don't abuse yourself, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, people that suffer, suffer abuse, they first abuse themselves. Because when purpose is not clear, and it's your responsibility actually to find out what your purpose is, and if you don't know what your purpose is, men will abuse you or you will abuse yourself. It's just the truth. I, I, I wish I could spin it the other way, but it's just the truth. But when you know who you are, when you, when you know what drives you and you stick to it and you believe in yourself, you know your assignment, you're unstoppable. I say you are unstoppable. I say you are unstoppable. In the name of Jesus. So the first sign of disorderliness is lack. The first sign. Can I say that again? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is serious. 
shared with you guys last week that this church, we don't only prepare you for heaven, we prepare you to live on earth. We don't always want you to go to heaven, then you're just, you become miserable here. So that's why we're teaching this. The first sign of disorderliness is lack. Anytime you see lack in your life, some things are not in proper place. Trust me. The first sign, that's what happens in Genesis chapter 1. Let me run with this. So there was lack. And this first sign, the first solution to disorderliness is order. And God placed order in chapter verse 3. Let there be light. As soon as light came into the scene, as soon as purpose is clarified, as soon as man can see, it begins to actually, okay, it begins to alter his life. And you begin to see things happening. We don't have time to go through that. You cannot achieve anything in darkness. So you cannot achieve anything in ignorance. No. So God says, I can't achieve anything with this darkness. Let me first create light. Let it be light. And as soon as light came, God begins to separate. He begins to do his work. So the first order to order is what? Order. It's story it's light. Amen. Hosea chapter 4, verse number 6a. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And this is the way he put it. The amplifier says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Of the law, they were just destroyed. Psalm 82, verse number 5. They, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness, and all the foundation of the earth are out of course. It's talking about a human being that walks in darkness. Everything in their life is out of place. Not until... You recover your, not until you put order in life, you cannot recover your destiny. Destiny can only be recovered. Or the recovery of destiny is actually tied to discovery. And that was what God did. How do we establish order in our lives? How do we establish order in our lives? Psalm 100, Psalm 1 verse number 1. How do we establish order in our lives? Psalm 1 verse number 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the discomfort, of the comfort, scornful. It says, Blessed is this man that order his steps. And it begins to outline what that order simply means. It says, This man does not walk. In the counsel of the ungodly, it takes godly counsel. He had a connection. This man had a connection with his God. The best person that can fix any car, you don't carry your, your Mercedes Benz to a Ford factory. They can't fix it well. We are created by God. And the only, man that can, the only one that can fix me is my God. Because my members were with him. He fixed me. He puts me together. So he says, if this man continually walk with the counsel of the ungodly, it's not blessed. But the blessed man is connected to his God. His maker. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. There are three things I draw out from this. The first order that the psalmist is saying here, he says, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the godly. It's talking about our association, sorry, our actions. I break it down into three. The first one is that you must order your actions. If you are going to walk orderly, if you are going to re-establish order in your life, you must watch out for your actions. He says, blessed is the man that walketh not. 
in the counsel of the ungodly. So his actions are not actually inspired by the ungodly. That is the first action the psalmist is actually, first recommendation the psalmist is giving us here. That if we are going to really put your life in order, the first thing is that you must order your steps, your actions. Blessed is the man that walketh not. Walking is an art. Action. Number two. No standard in the way of sinners. He's talking about association. First, you talk about your actions. Is your action being influenced by the ungodly? If you take care of that, then you must take care of your association. He says the standard in the midst of the ungodly. So who are you associating with? It will affect the order of your life. It will affect the order of your life. As great as any Christian is, if he compromise or if he associates with darkness, it is going to be corrupt. Hello? The reason why you can still call yourself a Christian is because you're hanging out with believers. The moment you begin to make the abode, your abode unbelieving estate, you are going to be committing sin. Listen, you see this body? Its default mode is sin. We want to sing. I don't care how you are righteous you are. You want to sing. Every one of us. Don't give me that face now. The tendency of human is to sing. That's all. So what the Bible is saying that if you are going to put your life in order, you must be careful with your association, where you stand. Because evil communication corrupt good manner. Evil association corrupts good manners. Who are your friends? They will influence you. So the psalmist says, this man not only will watch his actions, he will also watch out for his associations. Birds of the same feather always flock together. Tell me who your friends are, I'll tell you who you are. Because we are influenced not only by God, we are influenced by our friends. If you hang out with gossipers, you begin to gossip. If you hang out with backbiters, you begin to backbite, maybe front bite. I don't know why they call it backbite. See, if there's a backbiting, there's a front biting and side biting. Amen. Yeah. So what, what is God saying here? To put first your life to put your life in order, you must make God your number one. We'll talk about that. You must separate from darkness. Talking about association, you must separate from darkness. Separate from darkness. God separated the light from darkness to bring order to the planet. It says, okay, if I'm going to bring order, I'm not going to merge darkness and light together. I'm going to separate darkness from light. I'm going to separate water from land. So if you are going to be in order, if you are going to be orderly, you must watch out for the people you hang out with. They will influence you. You want to be righteous? Hang out with the righteous. But I'm not saying discard your unbelieving friends. They are good. You still need them. But I'm just saying, watch out your association. Because they will make you. What did I say? Number three. Give me, back, give me the scripture again. Let me close with this. Oh, I have a lot. What is that scripture? Psalm 1. So the first is what? Our action. The second is what? Our association. The third is our attitude. Not seated. Now when you sit, that's what you are doing. You are now, this is me, sitting. You must watch out for your attitude. Are you corrupt? Are you correctable? Are you teachable? 
Watch out for your attitude. Your attitude is determined by your attitude. Your attitude in life is determined by your attitude. I have come to see, most especially in church. Anyway, that's where I'm hanging out. If I say in, in the club, you guys will be looking. <laughs> so you go there too? Our attitude is that we know it all. Our attitude is that we are too holy. So nobody can correct us, but we can't be corrected. Huh? I know God. I speak in tongues. I can do my thing. No. It says this man, you have to watch where you sit. Watch out for your attitude. Do you receive correction? Are you teachable? Are you humble? Or are you arrogant? The most arrogant people are Christians. I'm telling the truth. Because our attitude is bad. And that's why people are not coming to church because of our attitude. Yeah. Because if we are like Christ, people will be drawn to Christ. Sometimes our attitude to those that are not members of our church is just, hey, we are better than you. But guess what? You're not really better than them. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we hear, uh, people out there, sometimes they are better than us. Our attitudes. If we're going to put our lives in order, we must check our attitudes. Are you approachable? Are you humble? Can you take correction? Can you follow instruction? Our attitudes. You think you are just the best? Are you gracious, having the ability to give grace to other people? Are you merciful? Are you kind? Or are you full of your ways? Scripture records that there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end is destruction. Or are you full with God's way? Where do you take your directive from? From God? Or from your heart. Amen. 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 Proverbs 24 verse 14. It says, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto their soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be what? A reward and thy expectation shall not be cut off. When you find it, there is a reward. When you make your life orderly, there is a reward. And your expectation shall not be cut off. Why? Because you are orderly. You have organized your life according to the word of God. You have organized your life according to God's dictate. You are not living by man's standard, but you are living by God's standard. I am not saying that you are going to be perfect and holy. I'm just saying you're just going to be someone that is before God and says, God, let your kingdom come over my life and let your will be done. Can I hear loud amen? That is, that is the source. Amen. Three, four things, and I would um, separate from darkness. You must discover your purpose in life. You must follow godly instruction. That's how to, you know. But how is, what is God? Let's look at God's plan for man as I wrap this thing up. Thank you guys for listening. I just want to just give me some five minutes. What's God's plan for man? I didn't have that time, but would have gone through the first book in the Bible and the first five chapters we begin to see God's plan for man. A life that will be lived orderly must go according to this plan. God had it all figured out when he lays the foundation of our lives 
lays the foundation of planet Earth and tells us how we can live our life orderly. And the first, the first thing God did, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, the Bible talks about, it puts like what we just read, put everything in order. But God did something very unique in verse 26. Let's look at the Genesis chapter 1, verse number, sorry, verse number 27. God's plan for man in the beginning. How God wants us to live our life. The first thing God did was God says, I'm making this man, because we're talking about not the earth, we're talking about our relationship, the way God wants us to live our lives. So before now, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 25, God, has been, God was dealing with every other thing, creating the fish, creating the atmosphere, animals, and plants. So it came to verse number 26, and God says, come, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, let us make man in our own image. So God now is going to the real thing, the purpose for everything is done from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, to Genesis chapter 25. God now says, okay, now we have done everything. Now let's now make this man. In our own image. Let's begin to lay the purpose of the earth. Because before now, the earth is just the earth. Not until the guy that will till the earth is in place, in view. And so God says, let's make man in our own image. And let's make them in our likeness. And let them have dominion, even as we have dominion. So the first purpose in living an orderly, orderly life is for us to be in the image of God. You cannot live orderly outside of the image of God. That is God's intention. And you want to know the proper use of any material or any tool or any machine, you must consult the manual of the maker. And this is what God's intentions are for us. That You know what? I want to make man, I want to make you in my image. God says, I want man to have fellowship with me. I want to make them like me so that they can have dominion. They can dominate everything and nothing should dominate them. Like, as I am in heaven, so I want them to be on planet earth. So the first in make, putting our lives in order is to be in the image of God. Have a relationship with the Lord. Every other starts with our relationship with God. So we saw that in verse 27. And so God created man in his own image. And in his image created him. Male and female created them. The second thing God did in creation, as we begin to see God's plan for our lives and how it affects us, now, look at the sequence. God did not do Genesis chapter 2 before chapter 1. So the first thing God did was a relationship with what? What is your first purpose? Jesus says, what is the greatest commandment? They, they were asking him. They were trying to set trap for, for Jesus. And so the lawyer came and said, what is the greatest commandment? What is the mind of God? What is the final law? What is the thing that will please God the Father? Tell us. And Jesus says, you've read. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. It's all about him. It's we submitting our lives to him. It's we having a relationship with him. Guess what? We came from him and him will go to so he wants us to have a relationship with the Lord. So the first thing is God makes us in his image for relationship. The second order that God placed on planet earth is in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15. God made man. Look at it. It says, and the Lord took the man and placed him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. The second purpose for man is walk. Say walk. walk. Yes, sir. Second purpose for man is walk. It's purpose, mission. That's why you don't marry someone that is not working. I'm getting, I'm getting in trouble right now. I can feel the heat coming. But it's just the truth. God finished everything and he got the guy he just created for relationship. He planted him in the garden and says, go and till the ground. Yes. Cultivate. You cannot dominate except you are walking. Engaging the mind. I'm not talking about physical work. I'm talking about the walking of your mind. Bringing this into it alive. 
creative. So our first, second assignment is that we walk. And that's why Paul says, he that must not walk should close his mouth and fast. <laughs> oh my God, I've gotten myself into trouble. Second purpose, walk. Find something to do. Oh, Pastor, there's no job. Create one. I was, sharing, I was showing my wife this. And I, I shared with Pastor Uche. KFC. The guy said it at 65. 65 year old when he found that company. Home Depot. Check out all these guys that are, all this establishment. They are. They didn't form these companies when they were twenties. They were engaged with the earth. They became solution givers. So God wants us to walk and take pride in your job. That's how to bring your life in order. Walk hard. Walk smart. Put everything in it. Take pride. In going to your place of work. Take pride in it. Don't cut corners because if you cut corners, you will short circle your life. You will cut short your life. Work hard. Be diligent at your place of work. Take pride in it. Your boss is not the devil. Give your best to your job. Be the best at your job. Let everyone know that you are God, like as they will say of Pastor Sam, because you are diligent, because the second line of order for man is for man to walk. Oh my God. I, well, <laughs> I get you. If there's no job out there that fits you, create your own. I'll pray for you. I will fast for you. Create your, your own job. Create your own company and you will succeed in Jesus' name. The third line of order. Look at this. Genesis chapter 1, God created us for what? For himself. I want you to see the sequence. It will help you. That's why I took time to get it from the scripture, from the foundation, from the beginning. First is that God wants us to have a relationship with him. The second is when he brought the man to the garden to walk. The third is to have relationship with his wife. Fellowship. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. So God loves marriage between a man and a woman. <laughs> yes, between a man and a woman. That's what God is saying here. He says man and wife. And that's what he says here. I'm not adding anything. I'm not. I'm just reading the scriptures. And we are standing by the scriptures. Not Steve and Steve and Sam. No, not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. They should be one. Why? Fellowship. The question I ask you get that are married. How much time do you spend with your spouse? Disorderliness is when a man cannot enjoy his wife. You can't succeed when you are married and you don't spend time with your wife to appreciate them. The second order, the third is get married. <laughs> Marriage is honorable in all, the bed on the fire. I want you to remember that even as I'm encouraging you to get married. Don't defile the bed before you marry. It becomes sin and corrupted. Someone say preach. preach. So the third is what? Fellowship. Husband and wife. See the sequence. I want you to pay attention to the sequence. Genesis chapter 4, verse number 2, 1 and 2. And Adam knew his wife. Fellowship. They had fellowship. In the highest order, and she conceived and bore Cain, and says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she began to bear his, and she again bear his brother Abel. What do we call this? Family. 
Are you seeing the sequence? Husband and wife comes before family. Wives, if you live at, at paying attention to your husband and you're not paying attention to the children, you are disorderly. Can I say that again? It's just I'm giving you scriptures. Eh? Honey, I'm taking care of a junior and them, um, so I don't have time for you. It's disorderliness. <laughs> Are you seeing God's sequence? Your husband is your number one priority. Next is the children. The moment you flip it, you are disorderly. And it can cause trouble at home. Of course, you know that by now, wives. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Why fight war when you can apply wisdom? So you saw that in chapter 4, he introduced the family. Chapter 3 did nothing because Satan came in. So I don't want to talk about that for another time. Chapter 5, verse number 1. As we were going through, we'll close with that. Oh boy. In our own, create the community. Fellowship with one another. Why? Because you can't live life to fulfillment by yourself. You need a community of believers or community of friends to do life together. Fellowship. We call it connect. Because what you need in life, someone has it. What you will experience tomorrow, someone has already experienced today. We are created for community. We are people of community. If you're going to live life to fulfillment, you must live life in community, most especially healthy ones. Yes. You can't live by yourself. If you live by yourself, you are going to die very young. True happiness, true meaning to life is found in community. When men and women that God creates together it begins to exchange ideas, begins to build authentic relationship, begins to build godly relationship, that is what makes life valuable. You can't fulfill purpose without a community. No one is self-made. Every human is made by others. So you need a community. Even Jesus knew that he needed a community. He got a 12. Spend time with the 12 and send them forth. You need a community. You want to be happy in life? Find a community. Because the moment you are standing by yourself, Satan will force his thought into your life. Guess what? This world is corrupt. There are going to be bad things happening. But that does not negate the place of community. Because someone break your heart doesn't mean relationship or community is bad. It's just that you did not get the right one. Connect to the right one. You can't really live well without community. And that's why we, Fountain of Grace, is not a church made up of small group. We are a church of small group. Our lives have been transformed in this small group when we meet on Saturdays. There are many things I've learned as a pastor. Meeting with this young man. Every Saturday we do life together. I've come to find out that I can't do life by myself. There are things I needed authentic friends. Because there's no way I can live by myself. But I need people that are, face, that are with faith, they come with faith, they're not having marks. Because I need them to my next level. I need them for my next level. It's very, very important. That one thing you must think as we talk about order in life, that you need a community of believers. 
You need a community of friends, authentic friends. Those that will not talk you down. Those that will not judge you for, for, for your wrongdoing. That will not condemn you, but they are there to lift you up. Those are the friends we are talking about because guess what? We all have our downtime. Can I hear loud amen? We all have it. I am not perfect. That's why I need my brothers and my sisters. So, my brothers. I will meet and we discuss life. Guess what? I'll tell you the truth. It's made me a better man. Meeting with this man every Saturday made me a better guy. I'm telling you the truth. Soft in my heart. I begin to understand what it takes to be a man. Why? I had authentic friends. I have men that watches over me. I have men that I'm accountable to. We do life together. Sometimes we cry in our meetings. That was one thing I didn't have before. And that's one health. And that's what has made this church to be very healthy. Because we have broken this church into communities of believers. What we do here is just celebration. We don't do real church here. The real church is when we meet in small groups. And we cry at the shoulder of one another. And we go to work and see someone and say, oh, hi, my friend, how are you? This is my best friend. But there's a lot of things your best friend doesn't know about you. And so you do life by yourself. And no wonder suicide rates today in our country is going higher. Because even though we talk about high phone IDs, we are taking ourselves away from fellowship, from authentic relationship. And one thing we want to do in Fountain of Grace, there's one thing we want to do, have great relationship here. That people that are starving of authentic relationship can come in here and find great relationship. That will help them. So as I speak about order, I'm talking about one of the greatest order that we need today in our world. The order of true friendship. And healthy friendship. Many places you can come to. Men are not ashamed to talk about their failure. Girls are not afraid to talk about their fears and struggle. And we can hug each other and say, look, we're in this together. And everything we do here stays here. I'm praying for you. There are men here and women here, men here that calls me, text me every week just to check on me. They're not texting me because they are, I'm their pastor. They're texting me because I'm their fellow brother. They call me. And so my life, I've, my life has improved tremendously. And I not only speak for myself, I speak for most guys here that are part of this group. We have a lot. We have the authentic men. We have the women fellowship. We have the Esther generation. We have different small groups. Because we know true, really, true life meaning is founded in authentic relationship. And that is what sets life in order. But the first relationship we must have is the relationship with Jesus Christ. So as we all stand, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit us at Fountain of Grace, 427 Turnpike Street, Canton, Massachusetts, 02021. Or give us a call at 781-821-1121. Or feel free to give us an email at admin at fountainofgracebos.org. Or visit us at our website at www.fogbos.org dot org.